Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. One of your objectives as a practitioner performing restorative treatment is to assist in returning a patient's affected teeth and supporting tissues to as near normal a state of health, form, function, and where indicated, aesthetics as is possible. When this objective is achieved in the highest order, excellence of the treatment sequence has been demonstrated. Everything has been accomplished by the book, that is, with the utmost knowledge and skill according to the profession's current understanding. Although the dentist's goal is to achieve treatment results that meet all of the standards of excellence, he or she may fall short of demonstrating the ideal conditions for one or more reasons, including a lack of demonstrated skill, a lack of demonstrated knowledge, certain patient influences. A consideration then for the dentist is judging how much short of the goal of excellence is the treatment. Is the treatment lacking from the ideal just a bit or a whole lot? This question has greater meaning when put in the context of whether the treatment would make a positive contribution to the patient's dental health or a negative contribution. The same problem arises for dental students as they attempt to judge the quality of their preclinical performance during the formative stages when fundamental skills and knowledge are being learned. You want to know how close to the goal of excellence you have progressed. Knowing this would suggest either the repetition of those skills and knowledge for the next similar case or some modification of your efforts for the present and future cases should your demonstrated results be short of those standards of excellence. Self-evaluation is seen then as an essential and integral part of the educational and practice experience of both dental students and practitioners to assist learning and to assure the quality of dental health care. In order for self-evaluation to be meaningful and effective in assisting learning and in assessing the quality of treatment, an organized application of some generally accepted guidelines is necessary. A system, therefore, has been adopted that has the following characteristics. It uses rating scales. Criteria describe satisfactory and non-acceptable results of clinical performance. The criteria are observable and essential characteristics of treatment. The quality of treatment is operationally defined. That is, it describes its contribution to the patient's dental health. The system guides the student evaluator's thoughts through a logical sequence. And properly used, the system minimizes bias. It is worthy of note that the Michigan Dental Association, the California Dental Association, and the American Academy of Pedodontics are three organizations, among others, who have adopted the same system for quality assessment in peer review. Let's look at the system and its application using, as an example, the quality evaluation criteria for prepared amalgam cavities from the procedure manual, Introduction to Operative Dentistry and Amalgam Restorations. Cavities prepared to receive dental amalgam have four essential characteristics, each of which requires demonstration at a given level in order for that phase of treatment to be satisfactory. These characteristics are Finish of walls and margins, definition, retention, external outline, internal outline. Each of these characteristics has a range of quality that is considered to be satisfactory. That is, it will make a positive contribution to the dental health of the patient. They each have a second range of quality that is considered not acceptable. If this quality of treatment was permitted to remain as is, it would make a negative contribution to the patient's dental health. Three levels of quality are defined in the satisfactory range. That which meets all standards of excellence, is satisfactory with minor correction, and is satisfactory with moderate correction. Two levels of quality are defined in the not acceptable range. That for which major correction or corrections is required, and where fundamental concepts are not demonstrated. For the sake of brevity and ease of communication, each of these five levels or ratings 
have been given a letter from the phonetic alphabet beginning with Romeo, designating excellence, Sierra, and Mike to complete the satisfactory range, and Tango and Victor for the not acceptable range. Under each of the essential characteristics that head the four vertical columns, brief phrases describe possible observations that aid in defining operationally the traits used to rate the quality of that particular attribute of the prepared cavity. Each characteristic should be viewed independently. The evaluator, for example, observes the finish of walls and margins definition of the prepared cavity and asks the questions of him or herself, do enamel walls parallel enamel rod direction? Are walls and margins smooth? Is the cavity well-defined? Checks can be made for those answered yes. If all are answered yes, that characteristic is rated Romeo. All standards of excellence have been met, and the evaluator proceeds to the second column of the characteristics, retention. If, however, one or more of those questions is answered no, he proceeds to that applicable criterion below until a yes response is made. For example, from the prepared cavity, it may be observed that enamel walls parallel rod direction and the cavity is well-defined, which are both Romeo criteria and operationally defined standards of excellence. But the gingival margin may have moderate roughness of cavity walls or margins. Since the lowest level of quality for that characteristic for which there was criterion agreement was Mike, that is the final rating for the finish of walls and margins definition. The evaluator then proceeds through the other three characteristics individually in a similar manner. Evaluation of the quality of the prepared cavity is thus carried out systematically, directing the observations of the evaluator to the characteristics that are deemed essential for successful treatment. Excellence is recognized and shortcomings are observed with the specific intention of guiding remedial action to enhance the quality of that treatment phase. Certain factors must be kept in mind regarding this manner of evaluation. Each of these is important and deserves considered attention. Take time now to read the introduction to a guide for self-evaluation of prepared cavities and restorations or amalgam. And think about the eight factors discussed in relationship to the system for self-evaluation you're learning. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu/license.